Hey guys, Ed Bud here. Welcome back to the channel. If you haven't been here before, I specialize in running, shoe and gear reviews. I'd like to say thanks to all those of you who've recently subscribed. The channel's really moving forward and I do really appreciate it. Please do hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. It's free of charge. Hit that bell for notifications also of when new videos are launched. Something a little bit different for you today. A number of local runners and viewers of the channel have asked me, Ed, how do you stay injury free? Well, I've got a few things that I do. I'm gonna go through those in some detail for you. Obviously, I understand that these things aren't gonna be for everybody. These things work for me. Everybody's different. Everybody's body is a little bit different um, in terms of how they approach specific things. But maybe some of these things might be of use to you and you can incorporate them into your training and your everyday lives. So what's my big secret about staying injury free? Well, there isn't one really. There's a few different things that I do in terms of diet, preparation for training, and also races. I'm gonna go through a few of those things. Maybe you can utilize them. I can only really pass on some of the activities that I do, some of the things that I use, in a hope that you can incorporate some of those into your everyday lives, and my good buddies and friends can stay running and injury free. I've got two cats in here, two cats. They hate each other, but they're in the studio today. I've no idea why. Suddenly they seem to have come to an amicable kind of uh, situation where they can sit within like half a meter of each other. It's really bizarre, absolutely bizarre. Why are you guys suddenly friends? Anyway, back to running related issues. So firstly, to my pre-run rituals. I undertake some light stretching. I'll probably call it range of motion activities actually before every single run. Now, some of you might say, Ed, it's just pointless. Why do you do that? Well, it works for me. I don't know whether it's just my body or, you know, I'm 40 plus now. I'm in that, that new kind of category. I don't know whether it, it's me, but I really like to kind of stretch out, make sure everything's kind of limber and sort of feeling a little bit more supple before I actually head out on a run. I find it really improves my focus kind of on my breathing and also in terms of my focus and uh, just a few minutes of few minutes of range of motion and kind of visualizing what I'm about to do. So I start on all fours with some core stretches, um, concentrating on the lower back, pushing the chest to the floor first for around about 15 seconds and then pulling it upwards. So sort of curving the back very slightly for 15 seconds. I normally do about two or three repetitions of that one activity. That really seems to kind of loosen me up, um, certainly in the lower back which I do have some problems with being about six foot three. I've suffered in the past with some back problems, but this activity really does seem to sort that out, really loosens things up, and I feel kind of limber and ready for a run. The other way I've found to ensure that I reduce any possibility of back pain is by strategically planning to do my training at specific times that chores need to be done. Ah, oh, excellent. Brand new running shoes to test out. But you promised me you'd help with the chores, sweep the floors, empty the dishwasher, and flea treat the cat. Sorry, love, but I've got a training session planned. Um, I was just about to head out. You've bought more running shoes, haven't you? If I find out you've got another pair, I'm going to... I better get out of here. So next up, I stretch out on the floor, uh, on my hands, uh, with my feet kind of still touching the floor, so I'm sort of face down, and then sort of curve my back, again, sort of working on that lower back section. I do that for about 10 to 15 seconds, kind of, I guess, in the position you'd be in a press-up, really, but letting your uh, lower back come towards the floor. Again, this seems to sort of negate any issues from my useless memory, really, of trying to remember to bend down, use my knees when I'm picking stuff up from the floor. I'm really terrible for that. I'm always just bending over with my back rather than using my knees. So next up, I lie on the floor and then sort of push my pelvis down to the floor. Again, engaging the core part of my body. Do that for about 10, 15 seconds. And then I switch to pushing up with my pelvis and then I hold that position again for around about 10, 15 seconds. So the glutes get engaged a little bit there, but also the core still being utilized. Whilst on my back, I go through a cycle then of some different stuff. I tend to bring one knee up and then place the ankle of the opposite foot up onto that knee, just very, very gently through that range of motion from sort of pushed away kind of point of view and then bringing it back towards the body. Just very, very gently. I tend to do about 10 of those and then just hold in that position. So sort of really opening that knee up, 
Uh, again, as someone who's sort of 40 plus, I found that the knees really do need a little bit of work these days. So I tend to focus on those for a little bit. Do that for both sides, uh, keep things equal. I then do a kind of reach through kind of exercise where I grab the other knee with the legs in similar positions as per the previous activity and then pull that knee towards me. Again, 10, 15 seconds, nothing too hard here. I'm not sort of trying to really stretch anything out, just sort of opening things up a little bit. I think it must have been about five, six months ago, I experienced some problems with my right hip sort of clicking very slightly. I'm not sure where it came from. It doesn't cause me any pain, but it kind of feels a bit odd sometimes, certainly when I'm going through that gait cycle. It does seem a little weird. So I thought, is there anything I can do? Searched around on the old Google web and managed to find a bit of an exercise that really does seem to have helped. So I lay on one side, I tend to start on my left hand side, and then raise up my leg a few times, uh, go through that maybe about 10 times, and then hold it in a position so it's kind of pointing upwards. So really using those glutes there, it seems to engage some of those hip muscles and it's really helped in terms of strengthening my hips. Obviously switch up then, lie on the right side and do the same. Another one I tend to utilize when lying on my side like that is by grabbing one leg, bringing it back right up against my buttocks, uh, holding that leg there and for around about 10, 15 seconds. So again, just engaging some of those muscles a little bit. Another short exercise I tend to do involving the knees is just manipulation of those kneecaps. It's kind of funny, it always reminds me of that old Konami code that you could enter into some video games. I kind of move the kneecap up, down, left and right, up, down, left, right, BA, BA, start, something like that. It's really weird that the cats are here. It's some sort of strange, strange happening. I wonder if they're privy to some sort of weird event that's gonna happen later on and they have kind of decided just to hang out with each other because it's the last time. Maybe some sort of alien invasion, perhaps. I'll be okay though, because I've got my alien shoes. Somebody said that I looked like I'd come from Mars the other day. Can you believe that? Just a runner going along, hey, yeah, you, you kind of look like you're from Mars. Okay, is that a compliment? I'm not sure. You sort of compliment somebody saying that they look like they're from another planet? It's not something I would say to somebody, you know. You'd say, hey, nice shoes, man. You know, those shoes look really fly. Mm. Anyway, so just moving that. Uh, kneecap around a little bit, manipulating it, um, and just keeping things supple, you know? I remember the first time I did it, there was some really terrible crunching sounds, kind of like uh, somebody eating a shredded wheat biscuit without milk. In that position, I also tend to stretch the leg out and then bring the toes forward a little bit. You can really feel your calves kind of tightening there. Again, don't want to do this too much, just enough, just sort of starting to work those muscles a little bit. Yeah, I'm no doctor. These are just things that I do that do seem to help. Again, they might work for you, they might not, but I'm no doctor, so don't take this as medical advice. This is just purely from my experience. I'll do some rotations of the foot. This kind of thing, um, that seems to work out really well, loosens up those ligaments around the ankle. Uh, all these things just seem to have worked for me. I do some gentle lunges, so I kind of go down uh, onto one leg, normally start with the left, keeping my back nice and, nice and flat, and then hands on the hips, and then just moving forward into that motion, holding that for 10, 15 seconds again. Not pushing too hard, you don't wanna to push too hard with any of these kind of stretches or any of these range of motion activities. So I'm very, very careful in terms of what shoes I utilize for each run. You know, I'm obsessed with shoes, you know, I'm a real enthusiast, but I tend to be really, really careful. I look at the weather, what's it doing outside? Is there lots of rain? Is there gonna be lots of moisture? Is the ground gonna be slippery? So I look around to see if I can select the right shoe for the right day, for the right training session. You know, there's no real point using a very fast shoe for a three mile kind of shakeout, you know, just a three mile easy day. You know, you can only drive 30 miles an hour in a 30 zone, can't you? There's just no point wearing a pair of vapor flies for a, a three mile run. So bash out the Beacons or the Pegasus 36, something like that. They're ideal for those sorts of sessions. So just be aware, you know, have a look, get a weather app or something, see what's happening out there so you can select the right shoe. I think you really need to be realistic in terms of your body. You need to listen to that body very carefully. If you're not feeling great, if you're not feeling 100%, if you've got some pain here, there, whatever, don't lie to yourself. Just be honest with yourself and say, look, if I go out now running, is this gonna do me any good? Possibly no. So take a rest day, 
No one's going to mock you. It's it's your body. It's your training. Nobody else is. F forget everybody else. Don't, don't need to worry about them. Support them, yes. But you just don't need to worry about their opinion of your training and how you're faring. Be good to yourself. Take care of this vehicle that you've been given. you got one shot, so you've got to keep it well maintained. I'm a vegetarian, so eat lots of vegetables, fruit. Substitute out meats for some of those uh, meat type substitute things, corn, stuff like that. Really does work well for me. Helps to keep my weight really kind of stabilised. Keeps it in the same ballpark all the time. Try and steer clear of the snacks. Lots of water. Tend to drink lots and lots of very weak squash, actually. Um, I don't know what you guys might call it over in America and Canada. Do you have that? It's sort of get water. Chuck some of this kind of concentrated uh, juice in. That really does well for me. Lots and lots of uh, water and squash to keep well hydrated. Gotta be honest, I do love pizza. I really, really like a nice pizza. It's a fantastic place. Uh, very, very close by that does superb pizzas, an Italian place called Tamburino's. Very famous in the local area. They do a good pizza. Gotta love pizza, right? In terms of shoes, always go by the midsole feeling, that cushioning. Don't go by wear in terms of the outsole. The outsole will wear out way, way after the midsole cushion bottoms out. I know you might look at a shoe and say, oh, you know, I've got loads of miles left in this one, look, the, the outsole's great. You, you could be running just on some, some dead foam there. You really don't want that. That's going to only help amplify those injuries or any niggles that you get. As soon as that midsole cushion's gone in a pair of trainers, they instantly go into a special section called gardening shoes. I'm useless at gardening. I really do need to get out and sort the garden out. I really do need to do that. Again, I'll say these things seem to work well for me. Time is of a premium for everybody. Not everybody has the time to sit for 15, 20 minutes, go through all these kind of range of motion stretching activities. But I always look at undertaking an activity and saying, I want to do this for a long time. I'm looking at longevity. So for me, got to maintain the body, got to maintain the mind, got to make sure that I'm doing some preparation stuff there, which is going to ultimately mean I don't have to stop running. And none of us want to do that really, do we? We don't want to stop running. We love running. So want to make sure that we keep the body uh, maintained as well as we can. Hope some of this has been useful for you guys. Thanks for making it through to the end of the video today. Something a little bit different for you rather than just shoes. Talking of shoes, getting very close to the 100 mile mark on these now. I know Kafuzi has recently done a 100 mile review. Some really interesting stuff in there, some really great insight into uh, how he's got on with the Zoomfly 3. Um, I'm not going to say too much right now. I'm going to be there very soon though in terms of 100 miles. So I'll give you my update and honest opinions, friends and buddies. As per usual, please hit the subscribe button and like and share the video. Comment below. My name's Ed Bird, and I'll be seeing you. I'm in the cat room.